and welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I am allergic to cats and therefore I dread this comic. Oh my. And also joining us today is Jacob. Hello everybody. I'm very pleased this. What? <laughs> oh, you don't know that one. Well, this is a motto co- coined by Franz Joseph of Austria-Hungary. In 19th century, when parts of Europe came together to become uh, large ethnic uh, homogeneous states, he ruled uh, over an empire of numerous different ethnicities. Hence, the term comes in, in Latin meaning, with united might. And with united might, we will tackle this continuous travesty of a storytelling. <laughs> I don't think it went that way, but okay. Uh, okay, in today's episode review, we are going to review the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comic issue 96 and 97, also known as season 10, episode 8 and 9. Um, so, <clears throat> in the... F- I- I'm just going to go for the short synopsis for both. Um, sorry. Uh, how, where, 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 where am I? Okay. In this issue, Fluttershy, Pinkie Pie, Trixie, Discord, and Capper visit Absinia. And their trip quickly turns sour when they end up in jail. I wonder how. Uh, and let's see, the second part, if it's spoilers, I stop here. Uh, okay, uh, I, I can read that. In this, uh, in issue number 97, uh, Fluttershy, Pinkie Pie, Trixie, and Discord, and Capper tries to figure out what's going on on in Absinia after being liberated from jail by their uh, capital's old friends. Yay! So, we all know they weren't going to be stuck in jail. <laughs> but before we head into the review, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, on a certain level, I was pleased that we got a follow-up to uh, the stories presented in the movie prequels. That, uh, well, we we get where are they now? What happened? And this is a fun fleshing out for Capper, but events in this year's story really show how best. But I feel like the focus is off. That the climax calls attention to one character, even though our focus has been on a completely different set, and therefore it feels unfocused. Or we've been pulled the mm. switcheroo. I wanted. I would have say that too. I mean, the the focus thing. I do agree, but switcheroo not that much. Like it's just like their focus is all over the place. Their focus is all over the place, and they're trying to build this great mythos. But you can only do so much in two comic issues. That is also true. The darn oh, COVIDs, yeah. they, they really threw everything off. <laughs> uh, also true. But anywho, um, Jacob, what about you? Right. Um, I think it's time I explain myself uh, about my presence on this podcast, Silver, considering mm-hmm. I intruded upon it without your prior knowledge or approval for that matter. Oh, that's how I... most of the people come in. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't talk about it last time because we had the Pinky Cheese comic and I didn't want to unload the whole mm. thing back then. But now I think it's more fitting since we're continuing the overarching story of Season 10. So, mm. <clears throat> hold this with me. I was born in the late summer of 1987. Uh, oh, hold on a second, that's uh, that's my job resume, hold on a second. <clears throat> <laughs> are, you uh, sure that's not, are you sure that's not a document just to make me feel old? <laughs> Oh, oh, okay, okay, here it is. <clears throat> okay, thing is, I, technically I consider myself uh, an ex brony. I started watching the series way back in season 2, and I watched it all the way to the middle of season 5, and then I've suddenly fallen out of it uh, for some reason, and I didn't let a resident yak uh, hater figure that one out. Mm, there we go. Yeah. But... Uh, Basically, uh, I, I'm kind of glad I did fall out because then I couldn't less focus on uh, writing my own story for a comic. So I've been out of contact with the fandom for like the past five years. But then 
the COVID outbreak happened and since I was out of the job and I was bored, I decided to take a peek of what's been happening on Impressive Daily uh, just for uh, giggles. And that's when I spotted uh, the cover of the final issue for the core art that was released and uh. I suddenly felt a nostalgia rush since she was my favorite character and in that sole picture she looked like absolute paragon and I wanted to see where the whole thing led. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So the first, uh, when I first read it, I liked it, but that was just a dopamine feeling. Uh, after I came, uh, come down, I thought to myself, there's a lot of things that fell out of place in it. Like, I simply didn't have the context of the entirety of the series of what happened to the core out there. And considering this is quote unquote season 10, I didn't watch the previous four seasons. So I decided to go back where I left off. And I resumed watching the series to the end, and on top of that, I uh, read all the comics. Needless to say, after going through both the show and the comic series, I realized how horribly season 10 was handled. From the predictability of the overarching plot to the shoddy world building, and also personally the most frustrating one was uh, the unfulfilling Sakura's final destination. And it frustrated me so much that one year ago it reached the boiling point and I told myself I could write a better story with more engaging world building and character development. And with that, he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so with that knowledge that I accumulated over time I've been uh, on the site, uh, I've been busy writing a story of my own, uh, season 10 if you want to call it that. And I've been posting, I've been posting it on uh, filmfiction.com on a regular basis, so just so that I could put this trial still uh, out of my mind. So, uh, and then one day when I was listening to MBS show, and I noticed how often Norman is all by himself, and there's no group banter anymore like it was back in the old days. So I told myself, what the hell? I tossed my head, no, let me scratch that, crown into the ring. And here I am. Excellent. Anyway, you already know my opinion on season 10, so let's go and get on with it so we can dissect this thing. Alrighty then. There, there, there is, there, there is. Mm. Uh, <coughs> there is a lot to take in, but still, um, valid points. But anywho, uh, if you guys have... Uh, for me, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, how, how do I put this? Like, you guys had have a lot to say. I... I don't um i like this comic <laughs> i i find it very entertaining <laughs> uh boys <laughs> uh I, I sure i have some things but i don't really remember i like capper capper's cool <laughs> oh god but well, anywho <laughs> sorry the comics did far more with capper than the movie that is true or the show He's non-existent. They couldn't pay the guy. <laughs> oh. oh, he was in well, the background. Pretty, well, it's pretty much the case for all the cast that was in the movie, pretty much. True. Oh, boys. But anywho, if you guys have not read this comic, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So, we start off the adventure with our heroes in Captain S uh, Saliano. Captain yes. Saliano a ship and they are bringing the crew to uh, Absinia, um Capper's old proving grounds his home away from home the cat country and so on and I think I'm gonna hold my tongue before uh, we carry through because there's a lot to think about later on but anywho yes we are in, we, we go into the ship we see Pinkie Pie making waffles and so on and Rainbow Dash ruining them ah boys so <clears throat> long story short uh, Rainbow Dash Dash true tell the crew that yo um Applejack found some kind of uh, Tree of Harmony in her homeland and now they have magical pony powers and uh, I wonder if you guys have it here too and <clears throat> uh, 
and I think that's the subplot. And there's another conversation between Applejack and this. Sorry, uh, no, Fluttershy um, and Discord. Sorry, um, between those two, where uh, Discord says, um, "I'm, I can do magic. I can do stuff. Um, that'll be great, right?" And Fluttershy just says, "Discord, dear, try not to use magic while in Absidnia because it might freak out the people over there. Because um, the last time when they saw magic." A tyrant came down and ruled their country for about a long time. Yes. So we we do see the group there with with a few other ponies, which kind of puzzled me at first because oh, like thinking ah, Spitfire's there, maybe she's going to do something, and also Lyra and Bonbon, the two equestrian spies. Yes, yes, they they do stuff, and uh, we also see Capper and. Capper here doesn't look like he wants to go back home. Hmm, I wonder. And I'm going to pause there. So what do you guys have to say about the intro? Quick one. So you go first. Okay, I'll go first. Well, first off, drink in this shot of Captain Celiano and her crew. Because when we get to her story, those crew members will have vanished. <gasps> oh, no. Dis- yeah, that's true. Disappeared into the ether. Never to be seen again. Silver, they, silver, the secret. There's a secret to that. Have you? But they're all on strike. Have you pen left? <laughs> if, if they're just to the left of the screen throughout the entire story, <laughs> that's going to be some interesting placement. <laughs> oh, I love that joke. That joke works so well. <laughs> They just need to go widescreen. Pow. <laughs> Pow. Uh, but seriously. But seriously, now they've all become aware of the meta. Oh, we're going to a foreign land. Oh, I wonder if they have a tree of harmony there. What a, <laughs> yeah. what a surprise. Thank you. Yeah. But, and sorry. Well, I do need to correct one thing. The Storm King did not conquer and rule them. Uh, afterwards, he conquered, stole all their stuff, and left them destitute. Ah, much, much worse, much worse. The, the, well, Gert, now you just you just took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> so, oddly, a conqueror, but never one who wanted to rule in the traditional sense. He figures he figured if he had all the money, he'd have all the rule and power anyway. In that way, he's more of a pirate than Celiano. True, I guess. You know what? The Storm King's motivation sometimes puzzles me. That puzzles all of us. We hardly knew ye before he mm-hmm. became uh, a... Sabertooth. Gra- gravel. Oh, okay. I thought it was Sabertooth. Now, he, uh, he, the Storm King was now, was ground to a fine powder and now lines the street, the walkways of Twilight Sparkle's garden. Because I can be hard, I can be hardcore. (laughs) Oh, boys. But anyway, uh, well, that's all for right now. Mm -hmm. Also, although I guess I should critique Dash, a waste of a good waffle is unforgivable. And also, Flatish are not letting Discord clean the thing up. Like, ah, man. Let's, let me just do the thing. Do the thing. Well, we'll get, we'll get to that. All right. Anyway, Jacob, what about you? I have this uh, ungodly feeling that uh, Jeremy Wheatley is trying to ratcon what was established before because Storm King and, and King Dinan have magic because... The, the whole purpose that he was going about raiding places was uh, so that he could find the source of magic so that he could, quote-unquote, become the storm. He didn't use magic. And yet, he, the comic's trying to convince me that he used magic, but he didn't really. He just had a giant fleet of satyrs. Well, I, I could be wrong in the way I described it, because um, from what I understand is that when uh, the Abyssinians, um, they got a magical relic, and because of that, the Storm King came and ruined everything. 
So uh, that could be a better way of explaining things or uh, mm. describing things. It doesn't really feel that way, but we're gonna get to that uh, later. So I think we can move on from this part. All right, Tito. So anywho, uh, once they dock in Abyssinia, we see Trixie going up to Capper and she says that I feel like you're not happy going back home and stuff. And it's true. Uh, Capper hasn't been home in a very long time. The last time he was here, he was running away to someplace better and ended up in Clonker Town. Clonker Town. Yeah, Clonker Town. And that experience there left him high and dry. So he, uh, we get a recap or we get a flashback to uh, his old crew, uh, the six of them. I wonder who's going to be the magical power in this land. Uh, so there's Capper, Chummers, Shadow, Admiral, Fullington, Max, and Molly. And they all play their own role. Uh, Max and Chummers are two... Uh, sorry, um, sorry. Chummers and uh, Capper are two best friends. And they made up with Shadow, who could get in and out of anywhere. Uh, Admiral Fullington is the uh, getaway. Max is the muscle. And Molly is, well... Uh, the cat that likes to blow things up. So, when they when they were established in Abyssinia, they mapped out the whole underground or the sewer systems so they can easily get in and out of heist until the Storm King attacked where Capper and Chummers escaped on an airship. Or Did they say escape on an airship or just escape? Uh, let's see here. They so got out and never looked back. So they could have just run all the way. All right. <clears throat> so anywho, uh, once in Clunk Town, uh, Clunk Town, um, they meet up with the boss and they were uh, about to get an airship. And yeah, um, Chummers betrayed him. Uh, go read the uh, prequel comics for that. And then, yes, um, with the backstory there, we now know why Capra haven't been back home in a while. Uh, so, as the group talk about um, stuff to do in Abyssinia, they meet up with, or, well, when they arrive, it says, no outsiders and no magics allowed. So, meaning that this town are paranoid and stuff and yeah this this is going to get annoying like <laughs> yeah like mm, yes but anywho our heroes goes through town and are stopped by the police and the police are how do i put this your atypical annoying police where you just want to smack them over the head. So they ask what they're doing there and why are they here? Uh, no outsiders are welcome and so on. And Fluttershy says that, um, oh, how, how do I put this? Um, uh, they're, they're, they're law abiding citizens or they follow the law and so on. And, uh, do whatever they can to follow the system and by saying that they got um, arrested or well yeah kind of but uh, discord steps in because nobody touches a hair on Fluttershy but before he could uh, deck a person or deck a cat Trixie uses magic and scares the bejesus out of everyone and putting a magic dampening collar on them so they are sent to the king of Abyssinia and well let's just say that it didn't turn out too well because the king uh, is a bit of a meanie even after the amazing story that Kepper told him yeah the, the king just didn't really care nope 
and they are in jail now. Uh, I think and I'm closing to... You know what? Okay, I can stop here. Okay, okay uh, they're in jail now. And Discord and Fluttershy have a conversation about how Discord feels strange. Like he's lost an armor leg because he doesn't... He cannot use this magic. Fluttershy comments that, Wait, uh, didn't you lose your magic once when you... When you betray us with T Rex before, and uh, he took away your power, and Discord says, "Well, yes, but I deserve that. Uh, this one I didn't. Like I followed the rules, I follow everything, and I still got my power taken away from me. How is that fair?" And <clears throat> we see a sweet tender moment where Fluttershy snuggles up to Discord. And I'm gonna pause here before the fun happens. Um, Jacob, we start with you first. What do you think, man? Oh yeah, I got a lot to unload, to unload on all of this that was, that just happened. <laughs> like the four more cats being inserted just to add more main six parallels. Like if uh, if you read the prequel comic, it really doesn't feel like these four cats ever even existed. Like. When you read your exposition, it says that Capper, Chummer, and these four cats were like family. But then it says when the Storm King attacked, they just jumped uh, away and never looked back. <laughs> yes, because when you try to escape a world that's sacking your town and burning it to, gr to the ground, the first thing you can do is jump on one of his ships to com and completely ignore, the, uh, ignore your family. Okay, yeah, that <laughs> totally makes sense. Yeah, why not? That and, makes sense. <laughs> and then uh, this one, the no outsiders part. Okay, this is where I have an issue. You could say this is main hat, and then nobody would notice the difference. So why does Pantera look like this? Why does it look like a rich, progressive first world city? When the sketch of Abyssinia passed through, it was sacked and pillaged, burned to the ground. In the prequels, it's established that Abyssinia is a trade nation. The king and the queen have been using their wealth to import uh, the food for the citizens and to build homes. And uh, you know what they say about money? If it stops moving, it's disaster till it's moving again. So by all accounts, Pantera shouldn't look l anything like that. It should look like Griffinstone. It should look like a Balkan shithole. No, 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 sorry, sorry, that was out of term. The... Let me change that last statement. It should look like a third world nation, not a <laughs> Balkan shithole. And <laughs> I'll explain there's a difference between the two. All right. Third world nation would indicate high poverty, lack of resources, infrastructure, and in some cases, or most cases, even dictatorship as only one with most wealth has power. A Balkan shithole, on the other hand, has uh, everything that, uh, fu that a functioning nation could have, but what it lacks is spirit. Like, people don't have anything to be proud of, to aspire to, except to go to a country north and try and earn money there to send it back home to your family because it pays better than anything there. Like It's a like, world in a constant... Well, yeah, what? Like Griffinstone. <laughs> yeah. It's a world of constant state of demoralization, and there's a, because of that, that's a, such high political corruption for, uh, from those that are de democratically elected by those that decide to stay there. And everything is shot. Like, I'll give you an example. It takes like 20 years complaining to the government to fix a pothole in the road, and when they finally do fix it, it's done it such, with such a poor shoddy material that it quickly falls apart in a matter of weeks. <laughs> Yeah, uh... and th and that's basically the problem with Griffinstone. See what you said yourself way back uh, when you did the review for the I forget what the episode was. Oh, uh, the, state of the lost treasure of Griffinstone. Yeah, exactly. The Griffinstone, the Griffin Society, is so poor because there's no spirit in because it's because it was all based on an idol. And now that it's gone, why should they care about anything? They don't uh, even have a functioning government. And I don't know how much weight the Griffin Lords that were introduced to the comics actually have when they mostly care about their own territories within the kingdom. <laughs> um... yeah. So, if you're wondering why my avatar on this podcast is a Griffin, 
here's one of the reasons. <laughs> Sweet. But, yeah. But anyway, as I said, Pantera should look like a third world country since the Storm King burned down the whole city. And it took uh, the wealth of the only people that use it to import goods. So they have, they have nothing else to fall back to it but to scrounge. And while we're on the whole no outsider sign, why is the city so open then? If they didn't want outsiders to come, there should be a giant wall with checkpoints preventing people from coming in. Or, I'm gonna take a page from uh, your side of the pond, Silver. <clears throat> oh, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is going where I think it's going. We're gonna build a wall, a giant <laughs> concrete wall. It's gonna be 50 meters tall, and it's gonna extend from one end of Texas to another, and Mexico's gonna pay for it. <laughs> uh, yep, yeah. that project didn't end well. <laughs> oh no, it, it worked great for for people uh, on the other side of the border. See, what they did was they would sneak materials away from the building site and use it to reinforce their homes. Oh. So, really, uh, Mexico enjoyed a great uh, urban development plan, and <laughs> Trump paid for it. Oh, man. That, that, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but at the same time, he also made sure that Mexico did pay, to pay for his wall, since no other... Uh, People from the other side of Mexico were able to pass through. Of course. So, uh, yeah. yeah. That, that was an epic fail on all counts, as far as mm -hmm. I'm concerned. I, I mean, yeah, the best... Then... <coughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, no, uh, finish it. I mean, uh, I, I, I think the best analogy for Abyssinia should be China. Uh, the way that how it's a trading country and so on, blah, blah, blah. But I, I do see what you mean and I get what you're uh, going at. Uh, and yes, uh, that, that makes sense. Um, I, for one, forgot all about what Abyssinia is, unless uh, Silver remembers. But yeah, does that make sense? Uh, sorry, does, that does make sense. Because if it's a trading country, why no outsiders? No magic, I do understand. The outsiders thing, it could be uh, personal. But advertising it, that's something else, man. Uh, but and while we move the hold on, while we put the move the plot along, no loitering sound. Really, that's the reason for arrest. The fact that there are outsiders in the city when there's a giant sign saying no outsiders, that alone should be a reason to arrest them. I mean, the sorry, <laughs> how to put this? It is a law, and Flatish I did say that they follow the law, and. If the police have any reason to arrest them, there's a reason. And since this is a what, how do I put this? Um, a Silver, so help me with the word I'm trying to think of here. To totalitarian. Tot yes, totalitarian. Totalitarian. Tot 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 <laughs> I cannot say it. Okay. To totally uh, tolerant. To to terror. To to <laughs> total. To a Tear. And, totalitarian. and totalitarian uh, regime yes. <laughs> rule. Mm -hmm. So it does make sense. And also it's a plot device to get the story along. Yeah, but again, why, why is there no wall? It's really stupid. Anyway, um, where was I? Oh, yeah. One thing I did notice uh, throughout the entire uh, story Besides main, besides main six going expedition, is that other characters actors are more or less superfluous to the plot. Like they're just there, but they don't don't do anything meaningful. Like they, well, the fact that into what happens here with Trixie, says it all because she resists. She decides to resist the and She uses magic. The cats go on high alert, and they pile up on everything and start using magic negating shackles. If she didn't do that in the first place and we moved to, and we listened to Fluttershy uh, and Discord didn't use magic either and when they got to the king, well, when it became apparent that the king couldn't be reasoned with and they weren't armed with uh, magic negating shackles, Discord could just go and the whole plot would be over. Well, they need to nerf Discord, uh, but still. Uh, yeah. Silver, what do you have to say? Hold on. Oh, Hold on, more? I still have something. 
<laughs> yeah, there's more. So, uh, yeah, this is where... Hold on. Yeah. Well, the whole uh, audience with the king is pretty much where it's basically just retconning. Like, Storm King wasn't the magical creature. The whole point was that he was lo uh, looting, looking for magical artifacts and whatever. He wasn't let in and he was devastating Abyssinia the whole time. The capital was just the last one to, to fall. But this is trying to convince you that he was the one who ruled here. And he specifically said that the king and queen can just keep Abyssinia because he just wants the money. He was basically Attila the Khan. So this... <coughs> I'm, not, I'm not even gonna call him by the name. I'm gonna call him Meowth from Pokemon. Because that's about the only fitting name I can think for him. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, that's more, uh, yeah, we're the king and queen of Abyssinia, like, why is this little shit taking over from them? Because the only reason I see that this character is this is because, okay, I, I don't want to go into that direction, but this story was written in 2020, and considering some certain people are gonna say that was the worst uh, ever in American history, we all know why Jeremy Whitley is n n uh, not beneath insert. We know Jeremy Whitley is not beneath inserting Alicor in MLP comics, if you all remember way back uh, in Spike and Luna uh, Friends Forever series. Alright, alright. Uh, yeah. Are you done? Uh, hold on. Well, um. Well, Lord, things out, uh... Oh, yeah. Um, Cap was trying to give that grand speech about friendship and all that and how the king is a tyrant. Are we actually seeing that happening? Because all this saw was no loitering sign and three police officers, but nothing else. They're, showing, they're telling us something, but they don't show it. About what? The sign of, for uh, telling the The reason why they got... The, the group got the, and the group got into the city. They got confronted by a police officer, and that was it. But we didn't see anything else about Abyssinia was going out in the streets because we're, the the dialogue st and telling us that the king's oppressive, that there's uh, suppression everywhere, everywhere there's his attack, but we don't actually see it happening. Well, at the th at this time in the comic, we won't we don't see it because we're not told of it. Uh, we only told of it later on, and yeah. Um, yeah, we know it's after that, but it's still kind of failing. Go on, show, don't tell. But still, and they did show it because if you take a look, see at the town, there's no other pedestrians. There's only cops on the street. Like at least you, uh, at least in some of the comics you do see pedestrians walking about even if they're drawn bad yeah but even if this is basically a totalitarian state people would still walk about you wouldn't see constantly empty streets yeah but, but um, this, uh, this is another way for them to show it that oh uh, because the citizens are scared that they might get arrested and put into jail uh, they don't take the risk and so on maybe they're already in jail who knows yeah. Okay, this is just uh, one last thing before we move on to Scylla. And, uh, okay, S any one of you, maybe Scylla, I want you to read the what the Discord says uh, on the panel before the explosion, the bottom left one. And read out loud what he says. Uh, I know I've been trying I'm not upset. to make up for it, but not for it by blue. Yeah, no, 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 I said... I said uh, the bottom left uh, panel. Okay. I'm not uh, upset. Discord says, oh, I'm not upset. That's actually what's so strange. I did something stupid because I cared about some pony, and that's just because I wanted to. That's a new one for me. Okay, now let's let that sink in. Do you understand what he's saying? Basically, that you know how much he loves Fluttershy? He blatantly just admitted that well, that this was the first time that he did something because he wanted to, not be, because he cared about some somebody, not because he wanted to. 
So basically, he's just admitting that what he did in season 9 was basically because he wanted to first and because he cared about somebody was only second. That's what, and that's how the dialogue makes it look. Mm. And honestly, I wouldn't put it past, be, uh, considering I'm not. No, 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 no. <sighs> I, I, need, I need to call myself. I need to call myself. That be a spoiler. <sighs> okay. Okay, uh, I'm done. Silver, uh, you can take over. I, I can take it. Oh wait, the, the show is mine now. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh you want a cool. totalitarian state? <laughs> Just you wait. Oh no. <clears throat> but uh all right Let, why, rewinding back to that wide shot of abyssinia this has been a problem throughout the comics that basically when it comes to architecture they usually just draw straight house straight buildings not a lot of uh, diversity in the lines all that good stuff and as a result, no, places don't usually look all that unique. Now, this one looks very out of place because there's a scratching post tower. Appreciate mm -hmm. that. And there's a, a Persian-style castle. But the rest of the town or city does not match that, except for that one building that looks like a, a jug of milk. <laughs> but, all right, but cat puns aside... Uh, thinking about if you wanted to make this totalitarian, rather than making it uh, making it look destitute, you could also go for a brutalist architecture, which is no frills, stressed concrete, uh, repetitive block uh, themes. That's a way to rebuild quickly. I believe that's how uh, brutalism arose uh, as an architecture. Yeah. yeah, it's something akin to what uh, people who lived in the socialist Yugoslavia, we had such an architecture from, from time to time. And it was a way to rebuild quickly. Exactly. So, uh, so that's one way we could update this look. Now, Norman, to your point that nobody is out walking, but nobody's in the windows either. You could show the fear that everyone is experiencing if you had a few peeking out of the windows or looking for what's what's all the hubbub. Because one because once you establish that, hey, everyone's uh, afraid. So right now, for the, to be told everyone's afraid doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot if there's really no personality to the town. Now, no loitering. I mean, Trixie's basically here to escalate the situation. That's her role in this story. Oh, yes. But but the need to nerf Discord, this is the problem when you introduce a character who is basically omnipotent. Or nigh omnipotent. Nay omnipotent? <laughs> nigh. <Nice. sighs> But but uh, it's the same problem. Oh no, sorry. Um, it's the same thing that they did in the previous comics too, where um, the moss of silence happens, and uh, they could have they could just have Discord snap his finger and clear the thing away. But no, he's he just stands around and see because it's fun for him, and I don't blame him. <laughs> the, the ponies needed to learn some way, yes. But I'll this one him. here, why not? Hmm? I'll blame him. Why not? <laughs> uh, because if not, the ponies won't learn. But Animals. that's the problem when you. Sorry, go ahead. It's the problem when you introduce a. Uh, when you introduce such a powerful being as your into a story, you spend a lot of the time trying to just make him not omnipotent. I so, feel like it, this card here is the. Uh, how do I put this? Um, he, he, I feel like he's the Goku of MLP, where, yeah, Goku is super strong and all, and he could have just saved the day. But nah, man, he wants to have a nice fight. 
same here with this court. Like, oh, he could just snap his finger, but nah, the writers needed to do something to power him down. Well, that's just it. I, I feel like th at that point you've done a bad job with power creep. <laughs> if you're having to constantly nerf your character, it's like, ah, oh, come on. So, uh, but then we get to our kingy king of yes. kingness. So he is, uh, magic. He says magic came and destroyed it all. So let's let's really lay out what happened mid to Storm King. One, he conquered the land not because they had magic, but because they might have magic. He didn't know that they had this uh, bo magical bauble. And it was locked in the chest anyway, so how could anyone know before that? So, but when he found it, it was something he immediately wanted. So he was going to invade and conquer no matter what. But while, that, while you could argue that's a, a writing discrepancy... This is a new king, the son of the king and queen we witnessed at the Creature Convex. I have no idea what happened to the former king and queen. They were probably in forced retirement at this point. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing, a tyrant, one of the first ways of an authoritarian to exercise their will is to establish a threat and present that they're the only one who can protect you from that threat. And as such, I wouldn't be surprised if this king is spreading a false narrative about uh, the Storm King, saying he was a magical being, and that's why he invaded, and that's why they have to keep magic away. When in reality, he was just a tyrant looking for treasure, stealing magic when he found it. But that's less compelling than saying, oh, magic ruined our country. I will protect you, my subjects. Just leave it to me and don't question what I do. So even though it could be a writing hiccup or a continuity, there is actually a reason to understand it within the context of a tyrant. Hello? And, well, the movie summary just sort of blazed through that. It is kind of funny to have Capra appeal to the king's conscience, and then, boom, jail. Like, well, I thought it was a very good speech. And let's see here. Then we get, okay, Fluttershy and, and Discord shippers are going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs at this point. Just seeing them have this talk and interact, and Discord admitting how much he cares about this one pony. Fluttershy, unfortunately, has been pretty much a hindrance in this whole thing, just saying, no, no. Like, Fluttershy, quit hamstringing your team. <laughs> uh, that's also true. But at the same time, too, she she's just following the rules. And the rules says don't do this. And in all honesty, um, she is in a foreign land where uh, they, they are trying to be good representative of Equestria. That's a rationale at the beginning, but once you've been wrongfully imprisoned, I think you can say, okay, diplomacy has broken down. Now we, now we do it our way. <laughs> uh, I, I, see the, I see your point. I see your guys' point. And, eesh, yeah. You know, it, it, it's hard to side with the king on this one because uh, in all honesty this is uh, technically a national incident international incident mine this yes so yeah shit's shit's got about to go down by the way what happened to that blue pony with the rainbow mane she left on the ship with the others for her own comic arc Ah, yes, yeah, so I just have a thought, and it's a stupid one. Why didn't they just use magic to go there with this court's overpowered teleportation thing? Well, again, 
it's Fluttershy not wanting to uh, cause anyone unease. I mean, if you if you had a group of ponies and one of your own and, and a draconicus suddenly just pop up in the middle of a square, you'd have some questions. I mean, maybe not in the middle. I mean, near the border, like that could work, right? I mean. <sighs> My head hurts. Well, again, this is the problem when you introduce a nigh omniscient being. It's the same thing as when everyone complains about the dang eagles in Lord of the Rings. But technically they explain that away too, because Sauron might have spotted them and optic blast their asses. Ah, but the, okay, then why didn't the eagles carry them all the way to Smog's castle? See, there's always, when you have an easy out... People will always question why aren't you using it. Yeah, but also the eagles are jackasses. <laughs> uh, from what I remember, they only listen to Gandalf. <laughs> well, I need to brush up on my Tolkien. Yeah, but anywho, anywho, um, let's carry on. So, okay, um, so, uh, this got been trying to snap his finger, you know, just to make things blow up. And somehow he did. Code Discord. But no, it wasn't Discord. It was some kind of shadow person thingy. Oh my god, is it the shadow folks from the moon? And if you're wondering what's that, no problem, it's non-canon. So we see this shadow thing go up to Capper and ask, are you Kappa Dapper Paws? And he says yes. And said Shadow figure hugs Kappa and reveals to be Shadow. Not the hedgehog, but the cat. Yay! So, uh, Kappa introduced the group to Shadow. And Shadow says, uh, everything is, yeah, nice meeting you all, but let's get the hell out of here first. So they do. They is and somehow the alarm got triggered and uh, they have a kind of cool escape montage from uh, distractions like yarn falling off a ship distracting the police and laser pointers being pointed at the floor to distract the cops. I don't know if ponies will be affected by that but they close their eyes just to be sure. And... Uh, they blew up a wall so they can... It's a distraction technique. So they blew up the wall, think, making the police think that they went through, but in reality, they just went into the sewers. And in the sewers, <clears throat> they get a proper introduction to everyone, and it is revealed that... Uh, Capper? Chummers is alive, and we end our comic here. Alrighty then. Um, I'm going to continue on for a bit unless you guys want to say anything about the end. No? Yes? Um, mm. um, follow you, that... You, you, sorry? You do first, Silver. I think Follow That Cat is a movie reference. That is true. It's a Disney movie. Not the greatest. It stars Chris Tucker, if I remember right. Uh, that I'll ha that I'll just have to look up, but uh, I mean, it's just, it's an exciting escape. Mm -hmm. uh, although when your when your advice is close your eyes and run towards the explosion, it's like that that's I think a flaw in the plan. But silver, you know the rules. Cool guys don't look at explosions. Yeah, but they're usually walking away at least, and even then. Uh, they should feel an impact. I think only the nice guy, only the other guys address that shockwave. <laughs> That's true. Oh, I, I like that movie. That movie was dumb. <laughs> uh, but anywho, yes, yeah, Silva, carry on. Well, apparently if I type in follow that cat, I get a World of Warcraft uh, quest. So that oh. says something. That darn cat. Uh, that darn cat. Oh, it's uh, yeah. There's two versions of it. The uh, okay, uh, 1965 version and 1997 version. 
Well, I, there's also apparently a book called Follow That Cat by Lisa Charlesworth. All right, so it is a reference, but maybe more to book than movie. Mm, probably. I do, I do not know. Anywho, I mean, it's lots of excitement. Apparently, laser pointers do exist in this universe, so there is some technology. Well, you know, I'm not going to even question it because um, cell phones. <laughs> We're getting to that. Just wait a couple generations. <laughs> but we did have laser pointers before we had smartphones. I, I do want to point that out. But before smartphones, True. we got arcades. So, mm. well, they have those in Equestria too. Oh, no, that's true. Uh, well, anywho, <laughs> that's about it, Silver, or there's more to it. Well, no, that that's about it for me. All right, then. and uh, Jacob. Well, uh, it's kind of great that the cats are now using their own vo version of Pony Lingo because I don't remember any other creature in the series ever using it. And even then, Abyssinians didn't use it before this issue because they talked talk normally when they were introduced in the uh, in the prequel comics. But the every creature part, that's the most annoying because it's literally a term that's invented by Twilight. And by all accounts, the cats, the cats have no connections to Equestria. But at the same time, too, it's one of those things where probably... Yeah, I know, it's a small thing, but thing, but still. I, I, to me, personally, I just like the word body. That makes sense, but eh... Yeah, anyway. Well, you also, see, ev every body might uh, refer to the guards that are probably lying dead... <laughs> <laughs> there's several explosions. So, do you, are you inviting zombies? Don't I mean, invite zombies. <laughs> but if you if you uh, say every creature, zombies are creatures too. So you are inviting zombies in the wall. In the wall. Everybody's hit the floor. Everybody's hit the floor. <laughs> oh god, no. Uh, and there we go. Oh, yeah. I think that's that would be the theme song for Molly. Oh, God. Yeah, yep. Molly is evil. I can tell just by that green when Pinkie Pie is hugging, uh, Pinkie Pie, uh, Pinkie Pie is hugging her. Never trust something that's small and cute. Always expect that it's gonna be first to do something bad. I'm gonna kill you, Wes. <laughs> oh, and then uh, I lied. <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, Jacob. Yeah, that's it. That's it. All right then. So let's move on to issue ninety-seven. So, they meet up in the sewers and have a welcome to the Abyssinian undergrounds. Uh, Kepper here is surprised to see Chummers, and uh, we, we see there's a lot of cats here. Uh, we have an explanation of why they're here, and that's because... Uh, <clears throat> Give me a second, I'm trying to see. Okay, uh, what Max says to Fluttershy is some of them were trying to get to... Uh, sorry, um, we try to get as many as we can before the king does. A uh, race like the one tonight are uh, risky, blah, blah, blah. So basically, the king just put certain uh, citizens into jails and whatnot. And yeah. And we see uh, Admiral... Um, Fullington uh, managed to pick pock, uh, pick lock the magic inhibitor, so that's cool. And uh, once he's done with Trixie, uh, he was about to do discords, and Trixie made it worse by melting the collar, so there's no way to lock pick it. And Discord wants to. <sighs> And tear Trixie a new one, but this Fluttershy stops her him. Yes, and uh, boys, uh, Fluttershy did make a good point about how they need to work together and whatnot, and kind of save this land. So, <clears throat> oh, let's see. Chalmers here uh, mentioned that uh, when they were younger, they managed to found this door that kind of have a tree in it. And it seems 
well, rather silly to have it in the sword, so they didn't really care about it. But after the king somehow took over the place and kind of, well, uh, became a dictator, uh, when they hit there again, they it, it's guarded by guards. Well, a small amount of guards. So uh, they know that it's a good place to start. Uh, maybe going there might unlock some kind of hidden feature in some kind of castle. So uh, that is where they go first. So I'm going to pause here. So um, Silver, what do you think? Well, the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon. Mm -mm. Little boy and the man in the moon. No. That's about all I got. Kittens galore and... Well, we still got a nerf Discord. Yes. He's still that insta-fix. So I feel a little bad for Trixie as she's, well, once again, just sort of there to make things worse. <laughs> she's a plot deterred, basically. Exactly. And, well, I also feel bad for, uh, what is it, like almost half the Abyssinian resistance. They get just a few lines of dialogue to characterize themselves. Not much. True. I, I, I think the only one that uh, kind of stands out is Admiral Fluffington and probably Mittens. Well, that's his name, right? Mittens. Or am I thinking something Mo else? Molly? Molly? Molly, yes. Molly. You know what? I, well, that's a lie. If I don't remember Mittens, Molly, yeah, no. I, I don't know. Just Admiral. And hey, Shadow. Even Okay. Uh, I would say Shadow gets the most characterization out of the group out of the newcomers. Mm -hmm. Capra and Tremor have continuity on their side, so yes. you know they've got. But here's Shadow, and if her design doesn't scream rarity, well, there's going to be a little misdirection on that part. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, I don't have a lot to say right now, other than. Someone built a sewer around a tree of harmony. If that doesn't show a complete lack of awareness. <laughs> it's uh, like, hey, this this tree radiates uh, goodwill and friendship and positivity. Let's does it put make our, money? our let's put our pool water around it. <laughs> but does it make money? Uh, Either no. way. I'm just, I'm just like, how how did this even happen? How what architect said let's take, make this part of, into a sewer? But it could be one of those things where it's supposed to be hidden and no one should know about it. Blah blah blah. <laughs> oh boys, what well, anywho? I'm just saying they surrounded it with pool water. Ah, uh, but but anywho, uh, Jacob, what about you, man? Well, I think I pretty much uh, said earlier that. This basically just establishes the tricks and tricks is here solely to make sure that there's no easy fix to the plot when with Oscar it could have easily happened. Ah, uh, that is true. That is true. Yeah. All right. Then. But anyway, uh, yeah, I don't have much to say, but I I'm just gonna say it uh, now. Uh, on the next panel, I noticed now that there is actually uh, an error oh. from from, uh, from the editor. When they're running through the sewer. Oh, yes, that one. It says, Chummer, I thought you were dead. How did you... And then the word bubbles pointing towards Chummer instead of Cap. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. minor, forgivable. No, it's not. We pay for this shit. <laughs> yeah. Hey, anyway. Hey, as a, as a child of the 80s, uh, I can tell you that happened a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. the, the, the wrong voice would come out of a character's mouth. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, you're you're absolutely right. At the same time, I can't get as offended because you get kind of conditioned to be like, "Yep, this these things happen." I mean, if it's a TV show, then it's kind of forgivable because those things are not easy. But if it's a comic, like you have editors for God's sakes. Oh no, no, this happened with comics too. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I yeah, remember. but way back in the. Way back uh, in the 80s, they didn't have uh, computer editors to fix the errors way easier than they do now. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, look, I'll tell you right now, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it doesn't matter what medium you chose, they could not match the voices to the bodies 
ever. <laughs> uh, it was it was just one mistake after another. You're like, no, no, Donatello's the purple one. <laughs> Oh, boy. Anywho, I'm going to carry on. So, yes. Um, the plan is to go to the tree to, in, to do a bit of investigation. And um, in the next panel, we see a lot of conversation between Pinkie Pie and Molly. Molly, right? Yeah. Okay, Molly. And then uh, Trixie and Discord. Uh, Charmers and Capper. And also, uh, who now? Uh, Admiral Fillington, yes. And Shadow had enough because you guys are so loud that we are going to get... How do I put this? Um, we are going to get found caught. out and caught, yes. So me and Quiet Pony here are just going to go scout ahead. And uh, Discord says he wants to join too. But no, uh, Shadow says... You're, you're the loudest, so no. And we get a flashback of what happened to um, Chummers. Oh god, his name is so... Uh, so unfortunate for him. But anywho, he explains after he double-crossed Capper, he fell... His plane... Not really plane. His airship crashed and he hurt his leg and he couldn't walk. Uh, he was... Founded by some dogs and they treat him sorry, they tend to his wound and nurse him to health. So um with that, uh he had a f- newfound appreciation for uh what you call this <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? Um Life. Friendship. Yeah, Kindness. friendship, yes. Kindness, yes. So he took that and decided to make amends, uh, thinking that Kepper would be back in Abyssinia. But no, he was still in uh, Clocktown. And with that quick flashback over, uh, Fluttershy and Shadow arrives back, reporting that the guards have been double or triple at the door. So now, uh, Fluttershy devises a plan to kind of break through to the what you call this door uh, having Discord and Trixie play distraction and having the others uh, kind of lockpick the door and get through it uh, once Capper managed to lockpick the door with a natural 20 he is caught by the king of cats saying that it was all a ruse because we knew that uh, you are the only person possible for unlocking the door. And yes, <clears throat> uh, now we are going to go through and see what this magical thing is and guards capture them and whatnot. By the way, I have to ask, are those cats flying or jumping? Well, let's see. I have no idea. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to say jumping. They, there's great amounts of pouncing going on. All Lots right. Of pouncing. All right, then, because <laughs> a preponderance of pouncing. Yes, because I I don't see like they're jumping. It feels like they're flying, but that couldn't be. They have no wings. <laughs> oh, boy. So anywho, <clears throat> once the group is caught. And they brought them through the door. And we see another tree of harmony and so on. Uh, the king scratches the tree and Fluttershy gives it a tackle. And everybody in the group says, uh, you mess with Fluttershy, uh, you mess with all of us. And we see kind of a fight going on. Uh, from the distraction team to the guys inside, and yeah, it's it's not going great at all. Um, the group is being overpowered by the guards. Even Max there is not having an easy time going, uh, getting through the guards. And yeah, I'm gonna stop there and ask questions. Uh, Jacob, what do you think? 
Okay. Uh, here's first two things. Uh, what timeline is this? Like, how much time has passed between stroking sacking Abyssinia in season 10? Because it's indicating that Chema returned to Abyssinia as soon as he got better to look for Capper. But apparently King Meow over there was already in charge by then. Which makes no sense because we've seen the King and Queen throughout the series several times and yet they just disappeared when the story required them to be here to begin with. And two, when Chamber is first revealed, we were easily sus suspecting that he got that roughed up, punished Chamber. <laughs> He got uh, roughed up from the crash, which would make more sense than just breaking his leg. Which means he got uh, this beat up when he started to run the other ground, meaning that King Meow was the one responsible. I mean, <laughs> it does make a lot of... It makes no sense why he would be that way, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to do... As, uh, um, trying to defend the comic uh when cats fight they fight really hard and sometimes they get injured uh, i'm assuming the same thing applies here too yeah uh, and this this may be just a side note at this point but this going back to the prequel comic the sole reason why Chummer decided to betray Capper was because Capper didn't want to go on living a life where he had to steal just to survive so I'm not exactly following the line of logic here how Chummer suddenly got a change of heart on him not wanting to be a thief for life anymore. <clears throat> mm, not sure how that... Re mm, nah, no idea. Silva? Yeah. Well, let's see here. Uh, I'm just trying to remember the prequel. <clears throat> I thought it was just... Uh, a moment of greed that separated them. I mean, I appreciate this flashback as we finally get to find out what happened. And, well, as for the fact that uh, Chummer didn't lose his eye or anything in the fight, I could see that someone, that this conflict does have to take a toll in some way. And, you know, you got to keep your eye out for that tyrant. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but meanwhile, the funny thing is, this will be a question to ask when uh, when Rainbow Dash's crew. Oh no, wait, sorry. This was uh, Rarity's crew visits uh, the Diamond Dogs. Why were Salt and Pepper not part of the elements? I mean, gosh dang, they nursed a, a, a what some would call a natural enemy back to health. Ah, uh, that's true. But if that probably, isn't, if that, sorry, go ahead. But sorry, guys, you weren't born to destiny, I guess. But probably Salt and Pepper were not in the vicinity. Like they could have lived uh, closer to Clucktown or further away from Clucktown and stuff. Probably. Yeah, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Clucktown is on the same land mass as the rest of Equestria. Meanwhile, Abyssinia's across the sea in, a desert, in another desert, or whatever it is. Yeah. They're two completely different land masses. I just think it'd be kind of funny if the tree projected, we're sorry, the needed, <laughs> the needed elements are not here. And then Rainbow Dash just has to zoop off and bring them back. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, yes. <laughs> This, that'd be hypocritical considering the Tree of Harmony is across land said the, the Tree of Harmony can be used by anyone who wants as long as they got friends on their side. <laughs> oh, boys. But uh, but anyway, really, Meowth? Oh. Meowth just decided to play I'm gonna let you win on purpose because he couldn't open the door that Capper opened to the lockpick. I mean, it makes sense. Like, do this bit... Do these people know what tools are? Do, do you know what an axe is? No. Nah. What the, a mallet is? The door is magical. <laughs> the only way to get through is with a natural 20 and a high side of hand check. <laughs> Besides, uh, how often does one get to uh, do, pull an Emperor, Emperor Palpatine? It was I who allowed the Alliance to know the location of the Tree of Harmony. <laughs> It is quite safe from your pitiful little band. 
An entire legion of my cattiest fighters is waiting for them. Meow, meow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to use that as a ringtone. <laughs> meow, meow. Now we will sing my Imperial March song. Meow, 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 meow. Okay. Um, with that, uh, is there anything more oh. <laughs> guys? Yes. Uh, okay. Having seen Capper m with uh, his jacket most of the time, him suddenly without it, I'm just like, oh, Capper, oh, show some decency. Oh, meow. <laughs> <laughs> Do behave. We've got a we've got a naked Abyssinian running around. Oh, it's the, oh, won't someone think of the children? You, you say that, Silver, but Shadow's almost in the same boat. She's got the fur collar, which implies a bodysuit a la Catwoman. What about Max? A cat suit. <laughs> <laughs> yes! We don't talk about Max, because he doesn't talk. Uh, much. I mean, he does. <laughs> yeah, like, what, two lines tops? No, nah, you know what? I'm not going to even defend him. Whew. Anywho. Again, uh, oh, yeah. There's only so much you can do in two issues, and unfortunately, fleshing out a group of six in addition to six leads that, coming from uh, Equestria, that's a lot. Uh -huh. That's a tall order. Yep, yep. Uh, but anywho, I'm going to carry on because uh, the fun part is going to happen. Hold on. Hmm. I, can, I can just do one thing. Uh, wasn't Flapping, in Flapping Turn supposed to be the lockpicking expert of the group, so why is the... Capper necessary. Because he's not as good as Capper. Easy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, also. I am the king and I will do whatever I want! <laughs> like, just read the uh, Meow's line in Joffrey Baratheon's voice and you'd think that the line was literally taken from Game of Thrones. <laughs> Even though, wait, I think this came out before Game of Thrones was... Actually, when, when this came out, Game of Thrones was airing. Mm -hmm, but it was so. still but good. Game of Thrones was still yeah, good at the time. Hmm. Yeah, but Joffrey was dead already by that time. <clears throat> uh, but anywho, um, done? For now. Alrighty then. So anywho, the fun part is going to happen because aha, uh, we see that the guards are trying to beat on Discord. Oh no, the horror, the police brutality. And when they hit, they hit, they, they hear a clank. And they ask, um, what kind of creature has a neck that goes clank when you hit it? <laughs> and, oh god, I love this art. <laughs> uh, because this god replies, oh, I love riddles. I know the answer to this one. A free one! Snaps bad kitty. And they all turn into kittens. And we see that the king is trying to chop down the tree with an axe. Don't ask where he got it. And when he takes a swing, it turns into a feather. And <laughs> the king asks, what's the meaning of this? And Fluttershy says, it doesn't have to have a meaning. It's chaos. And that face and discord, ah, finally. You know, you know how valuable he is. And uh, that moment was two pages. Yeah, I, that's two pages of my life. And uh, we see the group um, going, uh, getting back, uh, getting things on their feet and standing on blocks that highlight. And we see that the friends, the six friends are the chosen one. Ooh. Uh, Pinkie Pie says the six of them must be the elements of harmony and uh, we see that Chummer is the element of kindness? Is it? Uh, loyalty. Loyalty. Yes, okay, there we go. Loyalty and Kepper is generosity. Uh, Molly is laughter. Admiral Fluffington is kindness. Max is silence. No, wait, 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 wait. Uh, that me he is the honesty yes and shadow is magic and they transform to form the power rangers nope 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 that, that's that's something else uh somehow the tree levitates off the ground 
and transforms the castle into some kind of machine. Taller, ca- taller <laughs> castle. Yes, uh, that somehow um, radiates magic, turning people into magical beings. Oh no. And Shadow turns into a cat from Friendship is a Magic Issue 24. Yay! Um, Basset, if I'm not mistaken, the Egyptian cat guard. Yes. Uh-huh. Best. Best, all right. And somehow they are the new, they are going to be the new ruler. Yes. Uh, they take charge and poor, poor chummers. Like, everybody gets an upgrade but him. Like, he's still injured. He, he still lost an eye. Like, yep, yep, yep. And with that. And he's still a cripple. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, come on. He, he lost an eye, but he sees things more clearly now. <laughs> okay, yep, yep, yep. So, anywho, um, with that, um, I think uh, Kappa wrote the letter, I think. And, yes, uh, the whole town is transformed. A, a lot of them turn into Basset, but Basset, whatever. And the crew goes back home on foot, probably. I don't know. And in the last two panels, we see that the laboratory, whatever it is, lights are turned on now, and the four lights are activated. And I'm trying to remember four. What happened? Uh, we the first one was what um, Equestria. Second is uh, Zakura's place. Third is uh, who now? Absinia. Uh, and what's the other one? You guys remember? Well, let's see here. I don't think Equestria was ever a factor in this. They never found. No, it wasn't Equestria. The last, the one that's been already deleted is for the final city that they visited. The the bird, the pe- one with Soliano. Yeah, the bird that one was always active. No, I'm just wondering because like there's three now and. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I I know I know what you're talking uh, about, and I think we should save that one for. Uh, for the end discussion, because there seems to be some kind of time why me issue with mm. the comic. Okay, releases. but anywho, I, uh, coming ends. <laughs> if I remember right, there was a, a, a re- release schedule kerfuffle. Ah, so meaning this comic is supposed to be uh, before Fluttershy's, uh, sorry, uh, Rainbow Dash's thing? Well, it's really complicated, because this comic was originally supposed to come, well, the... Pinkie Pie co- issue came out um, in February. Mm-hmm. This uh, issue 69 uh, was supposed to come out in March. But for some reason, there was a delay. Mm-hmm. And it came out in April. However, two weeks after this issue was released, the annual 2012 was released. And at the end of uh, that story... There's, there's, wait, how many, uh, there's three lights lit up, which means the story of Abyssinia is taking place later than the story of the annual. Hmm, oh boy, timelines are so confusing. Yeah, (laughs) we've been through this last week, Norman. (laughs) But anyway. Wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. Ah, yes, that's true. But anywho, uh, coming ends, so... Uh, let's, let's kind of wrap it up and also, um, opinion. So, uh, Silver, final thoughts and what do you think? Well, I think that's a bit of a redundant question. Isn't that what final thoughts are? Okay. (laughs) But, uh, okay. One, I appreciate that, uh, Chummer is the element of loyalty. He faltered. He didn't, he didn't appreciate it, but learning from that mistake, he grew. It's a bit like Applejack learning the value of honesty from uh, that episode where the apple lies. So I, I always like it when a character can reflect uh, can reflect the changes. There's also was watching a, a video on redemption arcs where uh, the the video essayist argued that for a redemption arc to work best, there has to be a certain equivalency to the wrongs done. So, in this case, uh, Chummer 
is sticking by his friends, even though it looks like they're about to be defeated and possibly executed. He's still sticking with them. So that is his equivalency to abandoning Capper in a moment of self-preservation. But two things bother me at the end of this. The first is that the king, the emperor, whatever you want to call him, is easily ousted right away. And I thought, wouldn't it have been interesting if the elements were still, an, even after awakening to their respective powers, were still an underground resistance? But My Little Pony loves to wrap things up in pretty much totality. Mm-hmm. So he's he's abandoned. The other thing is that this, of all the characters who receive a new power, Shadow is the one who undergoes the greatest transformation. I feel like we really needed more time with her to appreciate this change, and why is she the element of magic? Not just for a recessive trait, but for something about her. Unfortunately, you know, two issues, large cast, very hard to give the spotlight. Also, um, the, the only reason why Zakura works is because we were with her from season one, so... Yeah. Yes, but unfortunately, as these comics go along, with reduced time and lack of familiarity, I'm afraid that uh, the characters, we really don't get have as much time to get to know them as uh, we'd like. And that is, uh, as I understand it, again, human malware mm-hmm. uh, caused a very drastic shift in these stories. Though the question that follows from that is... Okay, due to, due to forces beyond anyone's control, you have less time to express all these characters. Would it make more sense to have one character embody several elements? Or what, hmm. as Luna and Celestia did? Hmm, but that, that's a concept. It's, it's, I don't know if keeping the cast at six was a way to show equality with Equestria and its main six, or if it was a mandate from the studio, uh, I I don't know the rationale behind it. In all all honesty, the only way to fix this is a compendium story uh, that kind of explains stuff later on, uh, similar to how they did... uh, Give me a second, there's a lot. uh, With uh, Friends Forever or even the Legends of Magic series, or even, you know, those compendium books that we had before? Uh, What, uh, the micro-series? Those two? Like, those works for a reason. Like, uh, I I remember talking to Heather Breckel back in the day, saying that uh, the uh, micro-series or Friends Forever were a great idea because you can put A character and B character together to make one comic book, and... Uh, even if they don't really, how do I put this, um, interact that much in the show, uh, this is a good example of them doing so. So, yeah, I mean, uh, lost, um, too bad they stopped doing that. And, yeah. Okay, Sarah. Uh, but anything more to add, Silva? <laughs> well, I, w- I wish we could revisit Abyssinia because now there's a very distinct physical difference in the populace. Uh, you know who are the, the magic users. And I wonder what new struggles would that create within a culture? That is true. That is true. <clears throat> All right. Uh, anything more to add, Slova? Nope. All right. Jacob, what about you, my friend? Oh, now he knows what an axe is. <laughs> he tries to use it on a stone instead of wood. I mean, Idiot. he managed to scratch <laughs> the tree with his claws? Yeah, whatever. Well, he has, oh, a, yeah. he has a new policy. Don't axe, don't tell. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, and we got the return of Sassy Shy. Ah, oh, yes. It's chaos. <laughs> uh, best two pages of this comic. Yeah, just love it. 
Okay. Now for the thing. Um, okay, we can all agree that Flutters and Fluttershy seem in C and Discord story way back in issue 24. Mm. It was good. We can all agree on that. Yes, yes. The time. Yep, yep. Yeah. Took, yeah. Took me a while. But, but this is really annoying me and it makes <sighs> no sense continuity wise. Especially with what's revealed later in the in the overarching story. The writer's trying to connect the dots of the past events, but in this case it makes no sense that Best and other elements of Harmony Cats are connected to Abyssinia. Because even back back in that story, the writer was trying to make a parallel reference to Main Six, but this was made in tandem with Nightmare Moon, in which case that was Anubis. And Sweetie Belle told the cats that they had to use friendship to beat him. <laughs> and, bes- and besides, there are ponies in the group uh, with the Anubian creatures, in the Anubian army. And it's been established that Abyssinia is away from mainland of Equestria. So the whole thing that magic from this tree of harmony somehow is related to... Magical cats like best way back in the distant past in the other side of the world It, 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 it makes no sense it, Jeremy is trying to connect the dots like making think this some grand revelation and connect it to some past work he did Well, to be honest, it was just a cute interaction for the f- readers because uh, She looks different. Oh, uh, isn't that a cat that uh, kind of lick your like your ex girlfriend before, huh? <laughs> so I mean, it was just yeah. it was just a cute interaction where it doesn't really uh, matter that much. And uh, if Shadow here is taking any uh, mythical creature, it Beset is a good example because well, I'm trying to think if there's any other mm, legendary cat creatures and. To be honest, not much in terms of um, l- legends, if I'm not mistaken. Like, yeah, no, I can't think of anything besides Beset. Yep. Anyway, as I said, the events that happened in uh, issue 24 and this, well, it runs contrary to what's revealed in issue 100 when the exposition goes in full mode, but I- I'm gonna hold it off and bring it back when we get to that. But basically, these two, ve- two events cannot uh, consistently exist. And finally, yeah, I got pretty much the gripe with the ending, just like Silver does. Like, the su- supposed rightful king had just been deposed in uh, what-, what basically amounts to a coup, so what happens to the kingdom? Where the king and queen? Did he take did he take him into an quote unquote early retirement home on a farm? Probably. Who knows? But uh, while <sighs> while reviewing this thing with you guys just now, uh, something hit me. You guys remember the IDW twenty twenty comics? Well, yeah, we talked about it last time, but uh, as I said, I didn't read it back then. Yeah, but here's the thing: uh, in the comics. Uh, the, uh, uh, the the equestrians the, the equestrians were doing a show for the Abyssinians. Yeah. So, where the timeline is this? <laughs> In the one that did, that wasn't written by Jerry Wheatley, that's for sure. Oh, uh, that's true. Wait, was twenty twenty written by somebody else and not Jeremy? Wheatley? You know what? I'm gonna double check. Uh, Ted Anderson. Ted Anderson. Oh, oh yeah, that's probably very good. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, but but still, but still. Um, I, and as for me, um, after hearing you guys talk about it and your frustrations with certain aspects of the comic, I kind of get it. Like the the comic itself is not bad, but it it doesn't really answer or fulfill a lot of things. For example, uh, what happened to the rest of the king and queen. Wait, wait, sorry. Uh, the king and queen. What happened to them? Because, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the French is magic comic where the delegates all meet up. Th- that's something. Or what happened to the cat king from way back when? When 
he was part of the quote unquote um, Power Ranger group. That's sealed Cosmos? Yes. Yeah, but Co- Cosmos shouldn't be. No, wait. Oh, no. No. Season 10 basically makes Cosmos part of the continuity because she was inscribed in the temple in the Chorus Land. <laughs> Crap. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, but, but just, just got bad from worse, better worse. But still, uh, there's a lot of things that raises a lot of questions. Unless, um, for example, the delegates that were in Equestria in the IDW 2020 were probably ambassadors. Um, yes, you can weave that away. Uh, the king, like you mentioned, um, sent to a farm to have an early retirement and whatnot. Uh, y- those things are easily way, hand wave away, but when you really think about it, what the hell happened? Exactly. Yeah, but anywho, uh, but anywho, <clears throat> uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I, I think that's about it. That's about it. Uh, so, anywho, uh, let's wrap things up. Uh, okay. If you guys have any questions, questions, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dimitrogmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at MES Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Uh, seek me out on Twitter, DeviantArt, and YouTube under MLP Silver Quill. Uh, you'll also find links to Patreon, Kofi, and a few other social media sites. But those are my big three. Ah, awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Jacob, where can the good people find you? Well, people can find me on the DeviantArt page, Yaka von Tolkar. They can find me on the Twitter page, Tales of the Ashes. Uh, if you're interested in the film fiction that I'm writing, uh, Thermal Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.com uh, under username JFT. And if you're interested in a comic that uh, doesn't feature ponies, but it has an anthropomorphic talking animals medieval timeline, you can visit talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go do so, guys. And uh, also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and also Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on polyvive.com. Links will be in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MPS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank you, Jacob. Uh, also, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> uh, Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, myself, like, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. I've been Jacob. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya. Meow, 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 meow. Where's the shotgun? <laughs> Crap, I don't have it. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll see you guys next week. Bye bye. Bye. God damn it, beat me to the punch. No, no. And some silver? Oh, sorry. He's dead. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, that was uh. perfect. Thank you so much, guys. Sure thing. So. Uh, that, that's the only cat pun I know that works in this situation. <laughs> uh. Uh, just another hairball idea. <laughs> uh, oh, boys. <laughs>